species? Where do they come from? And when did governments begin to study them? In 1947, a series of American UFO sightings triggers an unprecedented analysis of the UFO phenomenon. But their internal investigation reveals the unthinkable. Join us as we investigate how the fledgling 1947 U.S. Air Force comes to the stunning conclusion that UFOs are from another world. A global effort has begun. Secret files hidden from the public for decades, detailing every UFO account, are now available to the public. We are about to uncover the truth behind these classified documents. Find out what the government doesn't want you to know. Unseal Alien Files. Exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. In the years right after World War II, UFO sightings are still considered rare and unusual events. But the UFO phenomenon is about to descend onto the world stage. Many government experts consider the unusual aircraft are not aliens from another world, but Soviet spies or Nazis testing Allied defenses and gathering intelligence for an impending war. In the mid to late 40s, when you had these unknown craft that were appearing above the, the United States, there wasn't really necessarily an immediate fear that this was aliens attacking us. But we were just out of World War II. There was a lot of fear that this could be Nazi technology that survived the war, and they were doing some kind of second push. Public attitudes about all of this were uh, strange. We were in that odd post-war era. Uh, everything was kind of in flux. Uh, the Nazis, the, the Japanese had been defeated, but this new enemy, our former ally, the Soviet Union, had emerged. Uh, the Second World War had transitioned into the Cold War. It was a time of great uncertainty, great confusion. After Hiroshima, America's secret weapon is no longer a secret. But no one knows if the Soviet Union also has atomic weapons or if escaped Nazis harbor the technology. It was a period of unprecedented confusion, uncertainty, and nerves. We knew that Nazis had escaped Germany. They could have very well have created some base somewhere else with this technology and started to attack us. Unsealed case file. The Kenneth Arnold sighting. June 24th, 1947. Mount Rainier, Washington. In June 1947, just before the infamous Roswell incident, a light aircraft pilot called Kenneth Arnold had a sighting which would change the world. While he was flying over the Cascade Mountains in Washington State, he saw nine strange objects flying in formation at a speed he estimated to be 1,200 miles an hour. Arnold claims the objects are delta-shaped craft and vary their angle and speed in a manner impossible for 1947. He describes the saucers moving at a speed that would kill a normal pilot and initially concludes the objects are either remote-controlled and man-made or not of this world. He was a pilot. He was aware of what was supposed to be in the sky and what was not. This was significantly ahead of any technology uh, that was flying at the time. And these strange delta-shaped craft were like nothing he'd ever seen before. And of course, he was a pilot, so a very good witness. His story has been really known in the field of ufology as that first case, that first unknown uh, interaction between an actual pilot seeing craft outside of his window that lacked any explanation whatsoever. When he was asked later how these things had moved, not only did he describe the speed, but he, he went on to talk about a sort of uh, jerky movement. And he said it was like a stone would be, uh, like a, a saucer 
would be if you skipped it over the water. Before 1947, the public really didn't have anything to call UFOs. There was really no label for all of this. But a newspaper catches on to Arnold's saucer description, and the term flying saucer enters the modern lexicon. It tapped into something. It captured the public imagination. Uh, the story was syndicated around the world, and suddenly, flying saucer fever swept the world. A, a new term had been born, and this really was the beginning of the flying saucer age. In 1947, at the dawn of modern-day ufology, where flying saucers were being seen all around the United States, the government created the United States Air Force. Now, the United States Air Force pretty much took the lead in trying to figure out what UFOs were. Just one week after the Air Force officially separates from the Army, it creates Project Sign, which becomes the first organization in the world to try and understand the UFO problem from a scientific perspective. And Project Sign investigated numerous reports, brought in scientists to say, what are we dealing with here? There wasn't one or two sightings at this point. They were being reported throughout the United States at a very high rate. So they knew the phenomena was real. They had to figure out what it was. The fledgling U.S. Air Force initially considers many UFO sightings might be foreign enemy technology. When these craft were appearing above America, we had no idea if the Soviets decided, well, hey, you know what? Maybe Hitler had a point to rule the world. And even though he failed and we got him, let's turn our sights to America and let's control those guys. But as UFO sightings increase, so does the government's fear of what UFOs might actually be. Just as the United States grabbed a whole bunch of Nazi scientists in Operation Paperclip and started putting together secret programs of their own. Well, maybe the Soviets got some too. So could some of these flying saucers be Soviet aircraft or even missiles? Coming up, an incident at a key U.S. Air Force base has insiders rethinking their theory that UFOs may be Soviet technology and consider the possibility that UFOs are something much more terrifying. In 1947, UFO researchers from the United States Air Force struggled to explain a wave of sightings across the country until a series of sightings at an important U.S. Air Force base has the government on high alert. Unsealed case file, the Moroc Air Force Base incident. July 7th, 1947, Southern California. Shortly after Kenneth Arnold's flying saucer sighting. Shortly after the Roswell incident, came a series of strange sightings at Muroc Air Force Base, now known as Edwards Air Force Base in California. At 10 a.m. on July 7th, a pilot observes an unknown spherical object flying east at about 10,000 feet. On July 8th, four military personnel observe two circular objects flying at approximately 300 miles per hour spiral toward the horizon. Some of the craft were described as simply light spheres or orbs in the sky, while others were the more common flying saucer UFOs. Later that evening, a P-51 pilot twice attempts to intercept a flat silver disc of a, quote, light-reflecting nature. Pilot of uh, a jet aircraft who actually chased a UFO unsuccessfully for a while, the speeds and maneuvers were described as, as too great for him to even catch this thing. Even the commanding officer had a sighting. UFO sightings have suddenly become an alarming trend within the military community. It's one thing for a civilian or even a civilian pilot to see flying saucers and describe them as such. But when the military themselves start seeing the same phenomena, they're seeing it over military installations, that's a problem. When people who have huge experience in judging heights and speeds, when they say these are disc-shaped craft, 
when they talk about strange rotational motions, uh, the military sits up and takes notice. These sightings were hugely significant. Many inside the Air Force start to suspect that the unknown craft may be top secret American technology. The United States Air Force went through the assumption that they must be dealing with some sort of US domestic military program that uh, people investigating all of this just hadn't been briefed into. But internal inquiries turn up nothing. Now eventually that theory was discarded because after a certain degree of investigation, all the branches of government were brought into this and they said, no, we don't have anything like that. Still without answers, Project Sign recruits a number of leading aeronautical experts. Among them, Alfred Loding. One of the scientists that Project Sign brought aboard was Alfred Loding. His expertise would be instrumental to try and figure out what the UFO phenomena was. Alfred Loding was an aeronautical engineer who had done pioneering work on disc-shaped and delta-shaped aircraft. Loading was seconded onto this because of his expertise and asked, what is it that we're dealing with here? Loading and his colleagues are considered some of the greatest technological minds America has to offer. These people were aeronautical engineers. These people were aviation specialists. These people were physicists. They, better than anyone on the face of the planet, had an idea of what the level of aviation technology was. So when they looked at the UFO reports, they said, look, the speeds, the maneuverability here, the, the rotation, the strange way in which these things move, we can't do that. For the leading scientists of the day, it becomes a process of elimination. This isn't German technology, back engineered. This isn't Soviet stuff. This isn't US domestic. This is, this is above and beyond that. These scientists said, we simply don't have that technology. If it's not us, it must be somebody else. Increasingly and sensationally, parts of the US government started to think the unthinkable. Coming up. A commercial airliner narrowly escapes a mid-air collision with a UFO. But the Air Force denies eyewitness reports. Welcome back to Unsealed Alien Files. In the summer of 1947, a wave of UFO sightings forces the government to investigate what is being witnessed in the skies all across the country. Could it be technology created by hostile governments? Or something even more disturbing? Unsealed case file. The Childs Whited Incident. July 24th, 1948, Montgomery, Alabama. Chief Pilot Clarence Childs and co-pilot John Whited are flying a DC-3 passenger plane on a routine night flight when Child spots an object rapidly approaching in the sky. Now the pilot saw this craft, he knew it shouldn't be there and it also did not look like anything that he could really easily recognize. He ends up tapping his co-pilot on the shoulder, telling him to take a look, and then they see this craft travel in an incredible rate of speed from a fairly far distance to nearly right in front of them. The pilots describe the craft as cigar-shaped, with glowing windows on the side. This thing was closing fast. They almost literally braced for impact, took evasive action, and this object passed rapidly along the side of the aircraft. This is a classic case of trained uh, aviation personnel, pilots, seeing these things and saying this was literally like nothing on Earth. The near miss is taken seriously by the U.S. government. I think the military knew that this was a very reliable case. They knew that the witnesses were very reliable themselves. The case truly showed how dangerous this phenomena could be. The pilots knew that they had to take evasive action to not collide with this unidentified craft. When you're looking at highly trained pilots uh, with nothing to gain 
and arguably everything to lose by coming out with this sort of thing. Uh, in, in terms of credibility, this is about as good as it gets. I think the military knew as the commercial flights were going to increase in the coming years and decades, the problem had to be solved. It didn't matter if the UFO was alien or not. The fact that it was there, that a physical craft was there that could potentially cause that collision, bring down an airliner, that's a problem that needs to be fixed. But according to aeronautics engineer and Project Sign investigator Alfred Loading, the problem is something the Air Force finds hard to accept. It was Loading who was one of the first people to actually ask, could we be dealing here not with domestic US technology, not with Soviet technology, but with extraterrestrials? And he became one of the first people to really consider what was, in later years, dubbed the extraterrestrial hypothesis. The cases that they were investigating, uh, the UFOs, the craft, were performing maneuvers that we essentially couldn't do at the time. And so they really had no other explanation for it. This near miss put uh, in people's minds for the first time the idea that we're dealing here with, with not just lights or shapes in the sky, but structured craft with occupants. These craft are now showing that they can go anywhere and everywhere that they want, that there's absolutely no limitation to it. To this day, the Child's Whited case remains unidentified. Later, uh, when people involved in Project Blue Book, uh, like Captain Ruppelt, looked back and said, what are the most compelling cases that we have on our files? This near miss is pretty much at the top of the pile. The child's whited incident leads some experts to consider an unimaginable possibility. If it isn't us, could it be that some of this is extraterrestrial in technology? Are we being visited? Coming up, an alleged government UFO report whose findings are so controversial, the record of its existence is erased. Welcome back to Unsealed Alien Files. After a wave of sightings in the 1940s, the US government's UFO investigative body, Project Sign, is tasked with finding an explanation. And Project Sign investigated numerous reports, brought in scientists to say, what are we dealing with here? And finally, they produced an assessment, an intelligence assessment known as Estimate of the Situation. Now, this was a document that essentially outlined their conclusions. It put forward the explanation that the UFO phenomena truly was connected to aliens and extraterrestrials. To this day, the report has allegedly been seen by only a select few. Nobody can find it. It mysteriously just simply vanished. Freedom of Information Act requests have been filed all over the place, and the document just doesn't exist. It was suppressed. It was hidden. Maybe it was shredded. This was dynamite. It marks the beginning of a decades-long denial of the UFO phenomenon. This was essentially the dawn of the military denial phase. It was like one arm would say, hey, this is true. The other arm would say, no, no, it's not true. It, it really was a tug of war between believers and skeptics, not in the public, but within government, within the small ranks of those people charged with investigating this phenomenon. So this document, I think, is probably, if it exists, the most important piece of evidence that would come out of this era. This was nothing short of those people within the US government charged with investigating UFOs saying, we have investigated and we are being visited. It would be like the chairman of the Joint Chiefs saying, you know what, all this talk about UFOs, it's real, we're being visited, we're not alone. Can you imagine the public reaction? This is Unsealed, Alien Files, exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth.